Hi there, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you are one of my regulars. Today I'm going to walk you through how to group and how to weld in Brothers, uh, Brother Canvas, the software program that you use with the scan and cut machine. So these are functions that you probably use a lot, but they are a little confusing, and so I'm going to list the difference between them. So I'm going to use these examples that you see here to show you how, why, and when to use both of these tools and what the difference is between them. But first, as you normally hear from us YouTubers, I would really appreciate it if at the end of the video you got something good out of it. If you could hit the thumbs up button, and better yet, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I regularly release videos on Cricut, Silhouette, and scan and cut software and projects you can make with those machines, as well as the occasional card making tutorial. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics or projects you would like me to cover, I would love to hear about that in the comments. And I just like getting comments in general. <laughs> so all of those things help my channel out a lot. So I appreciate it and thank you in advance. Now let's get started and talk about grouping. So I've got this design here with a heart and a bunch of stars. And let's say I want to turn this into an iron-on for a t-shirt. Well, right now it's a little bit small for a, like an adult size, so I want to resize it. Now there are a few ways that you can do this. You can click and drag to select all of the objects and then just pull on one of the corner handles to make it larger. You can also do the same thing by clicking and dragging to select everything and then going over here to the second panel on the right, which would be the edit panel. And as long as you have the maintain aspect ratio box checked, um, you could like type in a width if you know what you want it to be. And then that will change all of the objects to that width and keep the height in proportion to it. But, you know, bear in mind that if you don't select one of the objects, like let's say I, I undo and I like, I'm kind of, you know, I'm in a hurry and I don't pay attention and then I start pulling, oh, I've missed two of the stars. Well, there's almost no way that I'm going to be able to like now click on those two stars and try to get them back where they're supposed to be and resize them correctly so that they stay like they were in the original design. You see where I'm going with this. Um, so obviously it's not that big a deal to just go up here to the upper left and hit the undo button a couple times, get the whole thing back to its original size, then click and drag again, um, make sure you got all of them and then resize it properly this time. But I don't know about you, but I have a limited amount of time to do anything really, <laughs> but especially to craft. So I, I want to do this in the most efficient way I possibly can. So for me, that is to just group everything together from the beginning. So again, you do have to click and drag and make sure you select all of it. But if you right click and then hit group, you see the boxes change from like all these individual boxes for every element to one large box. And then you know that you can just move this around with no problem. You can resize it however you like, you know, you could change the dimensions if you want. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to undo, but it just makes it and like, even when you click off of it and say you're working on something else, and then you come back and you're like, oh, I want to move this. You just have to click once to grab the whole thing and move it. And that makes everything, so much easier, but at the same time, you can also ungroup this and then you can change individual elements pretty easily if you need to do that. So ungrouping, you can right click and hit ungroup here. There are also uh, keyboard shortcuts for group and ungroup. The keyboard shortcut for group is control hold down control while you hit the G key. If you're on a PC, you would hold down command plus G. If you're on a Mac to ungroup, you hit shift control G or shift command G to ungroup. So up to you. I just like to right click. I, I find that easier. All right. So let's say I want to like re rearrange how this one particular star is sitting here. Okay. So I've done that and I'm good with it. And then I just uh, click and drag to collect uh, to select it all and then hit group again and then I'm good to go. 
So it's like a temporary way of putting elements together, but you can also always un ungroup them so that if you need to move individual elements around, like as you're working on the design, you can do that. And it makes it way easy and totally simple. So you don't have to worry about having to click and click and select every item every time. You just can grab it and go. Another reason to group things would be, especially on an example like this, where we have multiple colors. So we're gonna cut multiple colors of, of like heat transfer vinyl to put this on a shirt. So when you cut things, obviously you can only cut one color at a time on the mat. You can't cut pink and yellow stars at the same time. So what you'd wanna do is separate the pink from the yellow from the red and cut those all out separately. But you don't wanna do that without grouping those elements by color first, because then you're gonna be dealing with individual stars uh, that you're gonna to have to try to figure out how to put on the shirt once, you get, once you're trying to layer everything together at the end to iron it on. So you don't wanna do that. Instead, we're gonna ungroup this again maybe. Oh, ungroup. <laughs> and then you can hold down shift while you click each of the yellow stars, you know, one color of objects, then hit, then right click and hit group. Or again, you can do command or control G. And then to get the pink stars, you do the same thing. So hold down shift and click on each of the pink stars. and group those. And so then when you go to cut the vinyl, we can move, like say the red star will go down here. So you put your red vinyl down here. Um, we're gonna take our pink vinyl and just move it off the mat for the first cut. And then here we'll just move the yellow stars up here and we can cut our vinyl down to like this size and cut that out. Now obviously on a heat transfer vinyl, you would wanna flip everything so before you cut it, so to flip something real quick, you just go over here back to the edit panel and hit flip horizontal and that'll flip it. And it's super, that's really easy. So then you run that through your machine, get that all cut off and then you can pull these off the mat and pull your pink stars over and flip them again and cut them out. And so then when you're, when you wanna layer them together to figure out how am I going to stick this on my shirt you, they will be cut exactly as you see them here. So then when you go to layer them, it's a lot easier to put that design together before you iron it on and like do each layer than it would be trying to figure out where every individual star goes. I hope that makes sense, but it really does make it a lot easier. And then in the end, if you want to, you can click and drag to select all three groups group them together once more and then flip it back so you have the original design. So that's kind of the two main reasons to use group. I would say, especially if you're designing a layout with multiple fonts or multiple shapes, grouping is definitely the way to go. It's temporary, but super helpful. Now let's talk about welding. So Welding is exactly what it sounds like. It welds shapes together. And in this case, I have this word love and it's typed out in like a scripty-ish font. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Scripty font, like a cursive font that I want um, to print, to cut all as one word. But right now, if you look carefully, you can see these lines here, like the black lines indicate the cut lines for the letters. And I don't want this. I don't want them to each cut out as individual letters because you'll even get it where it's gonna cut like this and then it's gonna cut the O like exactly where you see it. So you have this tiny little piece that's gonna fall out and that's just a mess. So to fix that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld this, these four letters together into one word. So to do that, I have selected the word and then I'm going to go down, go back to this edit panel over here on the right, go down to the close to the bottom under process overlap and shapes. You're going to click this icon that it kind of looks like a goldfish cracker. It's like a circle and a triangle welded together. And it even will say weld when you roll over it. Just click that and you'll see 
those overlapping lines disappear. And so now it's just cutting the outline of the, of the word and that's exactly what we want. So pretty cool. Now realize that this is, especially with words, this is a permanent change. Like I can't go back in here and edit this at all. I can't change the, the font. I can't change the spelling, anything. It's that is now permanently stuck together in that design, in that spelling, you name it. That's the way it is. And you can also um, weld any overlapping objects. So you can overlap two shapes. You could overlap a shape and a word, whatever you want. As long as the objects are overlapping, they can be welded. So here I've got these two labels and let's say I'm going to overlap them like so. If I click and drag to select them both and then hit weld, you'll see that it becomes one new shape. It goes from being two separate shapes into one new shape. Again, a permanent change. However, permanent sort of has, has a caveat. You can technically unwell, unweld if you do it almost immediately upon, upon uh, having done it. Like I can move this over here, say, and then if I go up here to undo, I can click undo to move it back and then click undo to undo the weld. But Brother Canvas has a limit on the number of undos you can do. I don't know, it might be like 10. And so if you weld something and then you move forward with working on your design and you do nine new, you move things around, nine things around in different ways, you can un undo back to the when you welded, but you are going to lose every step, every change that you made before that. So just bear that in mind. Like you can undo, undo, undo. I don't know exactly what the limit is. There is one. Um, but you're just going to lose all the changes that you've made in between the time that you welded and then that you realize you need to go back and unweld. <laughs> so that's where if you're concerned about it and you don't you think you might not want to weld something or you're not sure you do just group it together and then before you send it to the machine then weld it or make a copy of the item before you weld it so that you can um, put that off to the side you can duplicate by right clicking and hitting duplicate and you can just put this off to the side should have grouped it for a C. <laughs> and then, and then weld the original so that you've got the backup in case you need to unweld this later and you, and you've gone past the limit on the amount of times you want to do it. So those are my two pieces of advice on that. <laughs> okay. So to sum up group puts elements or of a design together in like a temporary way. It's kind of like cl paper clipping or like stapling elements together. It creates a temporary bond between those elements that allows you to move things around, but still be able to rearrange them later if you need to. Welding on the other hand is much more serious. Um, by welding, you're basically saying that you want those two elements permanently put together, not just like stapled or clipped, but they are welded together. Like a welder welds metal. That is kind of a way to think of it. And that may also be why unwelding really isn't that easy because it's supposed to be a permanent change. So this brings me to my lesson on grouping and welding in Brother Canvas. I hope I have helped clear up any confusion you may have had over what they do and also when to use each tool. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you learned something or you just liked the video, <laughs> I would really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for future tutorials or project ideas that you would like me to do, please let me know by leaving a comment. And I just like getting comments. If you just want to say something nice, I take those too. <laughs> but I am looking to give you the help you or you need. So please let me know what that is. 
I regularly post tutorials on Cricut Silhouette and Brothers Gannicut software and projects you can make with those machines, as well as occasional card making tutorials. So I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are posted. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will link to another Scan and Cut video at the very end if you're interested in that. Thanks for taking the time and I hope you have a fantastic day.